Hey there, my name is Gary Sims and this is Gary Explained. So Apple have just had their big event. They've launched the iPhone 14 and the iPhone 14 Pro. Now the iPhone 14 uses the same processor as last year's iPhone, so that's the uh, A15 Bionic. However, the i14 Pro has a new processor, the A16 Bionic. So this video is gonna talk about the new processor, the A16. So if you wanna find out more, please let me explain. So the key to the A16, according to Apple, and that seems to be bearing through in the way they presented the information, is that this iteration of the chip is concentrating on power consumption, power efficiency. And that will be partly helped by the fact it's now built on a four nanometer process, which is really a kind of an upgrade to the existing five nanometer processes, not the three nanometer process that we are going to expect to see maybe sometime next year in actual consumer products. So four nanometers, which in itself gives you better power efficiency, uh, better battery life, better thermals. However, Apple have launched the A16 and they have been a bit circumspect about uh, what we can expect from it. They're not the normal bravado about the increases in performance, much more underlying the increases in power efficiency. Now, the first place we can really get to understand that this isn't going to be a huge performance upgrade is by looking at the transistor count. So if we look at the transistor count, we can see that it's a 16 billion transistor processor. And don't get me wrong, that is an amazing feat of engineering. And that's 1 billion more approximately than we had in the A15. So there's more logic in there. There is new things going on. They have talked about uh, improvements to the neural engine, improvements to uh, the display processor and so on. There may be changes uh, to uh, you know caching. We know there's greater bandwidth in the GPU we'll talk about in a minute. So those 1 billion processors uh, transistors have been used. However, you will notice that that's not the same kind of change that we saw from the A13 to the A14, which was over 3 billion transistors, or from the A14 to the A15, again, over 3 billion transistors. Now we're down to a one third change compared to the other, just a 1 billion transistor increase. So that really should set our expectations from the beginning. This is not going to be the same kind of upgrade from the previous gen two generations of uh, processor from Apple. This is going to, this is a, this is a tweak. This is a, a an improvement, but not a major redesign. And in fact, when you look carefully at the press release, when you look at the word, they don't talk about new CPU or new GPU. It just says a CPU, a GPU giving me the kind of idea that this really is very close to the A15 in its performance, very close to the A15 in its capabilities, and it may even just be kind of an A15 Mark II, really, but for marketing they've called it the A16. Now you may say, hold on Gary, you're being a bit unfair, you're an Android fan, you're bashing Apple. No, if you actually watch my videos, uh, you will see I actually get accused of the opposite, that I talk too much about how good Apple's processors are, because they are the fastest processors in smartphones, and again, if you look at my reviews here of the M1 and the M2, you'll also see how much I like them. But at the moment, I've got some reservations about the A16. Now they did give us some figures, so let's dive in and see if we can eke out some information from what they have presented. So we know that Apple are sticking with the same six core setup. So that's two high performance cores and four power efficiency cores. And that's the kind of a template they've been using for quite a while now. Now they say the two high performance cores are the fastest mobile CPU. The Apple didn't give any numbers to say how much faster it was, why it was faster, how it was faster than the A16. However, they did underline that it was 20% lower power for those high uh, performance cores. So as I said, the emphasis here on power efficiency, 20% lower power for those high performance cores. That will come partly from the four nanometer process and partly from any design changes they've made. And the four high efficiency cores are quoted by Apple as being the most efficient mobile CPU cores. And they back that up with a interesting number, which is that it uses one third less power than the competition. 
So one third the power consumption, that's directly aimed at the efficiency cores from ARM. So that's the ARM Cortex A510. And they're saying that their cores, Apple's cores, use one third of the power of those ones. That's quite a strong statement. However, probably believable. We'll have to see what kind of testing and benchmarking uh, happens once these phones are actually out. But again, the emphasis here on uh, power efficiency. Now, Apple did put up one graph briefly talking about the CPU performance, and we have to note several things about this graph before we dive into it. First of all, that they don't show the A15 or the A14 on here. They go straight to the A13, which means we don't have a direct comparison of what Apple think the performance of the A16 will be compared to the A15, or we can't even extrapolate from the A14. Second thing to notice, there's no scales on here whatsoever, no other kind of labels. Is this single core? Is it multi-core? Is it, you know, is it a certain type of workload? We just don't know. What, what are the, is it to scale, is, does it start at zero? You know, it, there's nothing here. So we really are flying in the dark. But if we take Apple at, at its word and look at these, let's assume that this is for single score mark, something like Geekbench, doesn't matter exactly what it is, but something that will give you the performance of a CPU doing CPU intended work on one core. Now, if it is Geekbench, for example, we can put some labels on here. We can put around 1200 for the best kind of Android phone of 2022. That might be a bit higher in some things, but we're just gonna deal with some round numbers here because this is really is such a generalistic graph that getting down to, well, should it be 1207, just doesn't matter at this scale that we're dealing with here. And really, we know that the A13 Bionic was around 1300. Again, you could tweak it maybe a little bit. But again, because of this graph, we really are dealing with ballpoint numbers here. Now, if that's true, and I measured the pixels, measured how big each of these graphs is, assuming it's all to scale, then that means that you get a single score performance around 1750 for the A16 Bionic. The problem is that's not much faster than you get in the A15. So again, I'm wondering whether actually the A16 is just the A15, but with a lot of emphasis on power efficiency, 20%, these are big numbers, one third less than the, the equivalent available CPU from ARM. These are big numbers for power efficiency, but not much has happened in the CPU performance department. In fact, according to this graph that Apple have given us, they look like they're kind of, you know, it's the A15 and the A16 are, are pretty close in terms of their performance. What about if that was actually about multi-core? So again, we can stick some numbers on these graphs. Again, generalistic ballpoint numbers because we're dealing with such a generalistic graph, graph here. 3,200 for an Android phone, Geekbench multi-core, 3,400 for an A13 uh, Bionic. If you measure the graph, if you do the calculations, again, a score of 4,700 for the A16 Bionic, which is again, almost the same as the A15. So the fact that Apple are not talking about how much better this processor is in terms of CPU performance, they're not saying 10% faster than previous generation, 20% faster than previous generation, they're just underlying the power efficiency. I think we'll find that this maybe is just the A15 tweaked for better power efficiency, which will also explain partly why they've just put the A15 in the normal iPhone uh, 14, because it's gonna, it's already in production, They've probably got a lot of them. They've been churning them out. And if there's not much performance difference between the two, then hey, stick the A15 in the cheaper model and only put the A16 in the more expensive model. That's a theory. Uh, tell me what you think about that theory in the comments below. Now, when it comes to GPU, same kind of language again, not new GPU, redesign, new architecture, none of these kind of words, not in the press release, not in the, uh, as the presentation at the Apple event, just, five core GPU, and again, emphasizing the five core GPU because there were some models of the previous iPhone that had only four cores enabled. You had to buy the more expensive ones to have the five core, but now it's five core everywhere in the uh, iPhone 14 and the iPhone 14 Pro. And the difference between the A15 and the A16, they say there's a greater bandwidth, 50% more bandwidth for the GPU in the A16. And that will indeed 
uh, bring us a greater performance because obviously reading and writing to the GPU, all of that data, how that data then gets transferred to the display driver, all that stuff, the wider the path, more data can go down it. So that we will see an increase in the GPU performance. But again, no numbers from Apple, no nothing to say this is so much better than the A15, which again leads me to believe that really it's the same GPU as you've got in the A15, uh, but actually it's just been tweaked, in this case, greater bandwidth. So A15 and A16 looking similar. iPhone 14 comes with the A15, the 14 Pro comes with the 16 because really it's just the same processor. Could I be wrong? Well, I could be wrong, and I'm not going to say I, I 100%. I'm just guessing from what Apple have shown us. And we will know uh, in just a few days' time, 10 days, whatever, when these actually arrive on the market, people start buying them. The first thing a lot of people are going to do is start benchmarking them, giving us some numbers, and then we'll be able to tell. Okay, that's it. So as I said, tell me what you think of my analysis. Am I right? Am I wrong? We will know soon when they come out and then I will do a follow-up video when we start to look at those actual performance numbers. Until then, do stay tuned to this channel. If you want to make sure you know when the videos come out, do hit that subscribe button. If you liked this video, then please do give it a thumbs up. Don't forget you can follow me on Twitter at Gary Explains. And I also have a monthly newsletter. Go over to GaryExplains.com, type in your email address, no spam, but you will get the newsletter. Okay, that's it. I'll see you in the next one.